Hi! In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer for height map manipulation. Let's go over the keynotes of the first technique. The following technique lets you inflate and deflate soft shapes and height maps. The slope blur node changes inputs based on the slope of a grayscale input image. Instead of just moving and distorting shapes, it creates an interesting smearing or fading effect. The intensity slider lets you use positive and negative values. A larger intensity means the effect is pushed out further from the original shape. Mode adjusts the blending mode of the blur passes, while min eats away existing areas and max smears out white areas, the blur mode eats away and smears. Key with this technique is to use the same input for the grayscale and the slope connection. Here you see how I use this technique to inflate shapes like a balloon and make bubbles out of random dots with the blur mode and positive values. I make use of negative values to deflate and use positive values to inflate. I like to use the max mode with negative values to shrink something like pulling it in a vacuum. It preserves the creases really well. When I tweak elastic surfaces, I work generally with the min and max modes. The details are preserved much better than with the blur mode, as things don't get smeared out. The next technique lets you add nice smaller details to hard edges of shapes and height maps. The multi-directional warp node is a great node to warp shapes in an interesting way. It distorts your shape in a few set directions based on an intensity input. With mode I have control over the blending behavior. Average is more of a soft distortion, min eats away, max extends and chain easily gives you a really intense distortion. The directions parameter lets you choose how many directions to warp. I use this technique in the height map process to increase the detail amount. In this example I use it to break up the edge of a shape and have control with the directions to break it up just horizontally or in multiple axes. With the min mode I can use this method to damage the edges of bricks in a brick wall. It further is nice to bring small additional details into height maps. Sometimes a noise or shape has too much detail. With this technique you control how much detail you want to reduce. The blur node is the simplest and fastest blur operation. The intensity slider lets you adjust the strength of the blur effect. The blur HQ grayscale node is great to blur a grayscale image if you need a higher quality blur result. Blur and blur HQ grayscale are great to reduce details for height maps, but also to prepare noises that feed into other effects. While regular blur works well for fast simple operations such as slightly softening some edges, Blur HQ Grayscale has a much smoother quality and is better for big intensities. Here you can see how it helps to smooth the detail in a secondary map, which is used as intensity input of a warp effect. The last technique covers the Auto Levels node and how it helps to use the full 0 to 1 range. The Auto Levels node automatically adjusts the grayscale colors to use the full range from black to white, by increasing contrast. It's the fastest way to use the full value range for your height maps. Use an Auto Levels node by simply placing it behind the height information you want to rearrange. This is better than doing it manually with levels, as Auto Levels adjust based on input, it's dynamic. Manual levels is not dynamic and could become wrong if the input changes. Lots of default noises for example don't use the full 0 to 1 range. Use the display histogram button in the 2D view to see the color range of the selected node. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips, so let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.